And so I'm going to share a few things with you. Um, I don't really have a sermon written per se. I've got a lot of notes. I've got a lot of stuff, but it's not in the same format as I normally come with because there's just some stuff I want to read to you, some things I want to confirm to you, some challenge I want to give to you. I genuinely believe there's never been a time in Australia, or for that matter, in global history like right now. There just just hasn't. There's never before in this modern era has has the enemy of our souls risked the blatant presentation of death and theft and destruction as a political manifesto. Never before in history has a, has, a, has a political manifesto of death and theft and destruction been actually tabled before a people for them to pick up. That was a risky move and it failed. When I, when I woke up this morning, I thought about something I did last night. Um, I, was, I was in bed and I was watching some of the final results of uh, you know coming in a, a little later later in the evening, and once I was sure of the election, I went to sleep. Now, in one way that's good. I needed some sleep. <laughs> it's been an intense week of prayer, and almost non-stop. I, I've been praying morning, noon, and night. I, I've been fasting and praying. Um, I've been pray- leading uh, for some of the mornings. Other people leading others. Uh, Six a.m. prayer, then noontime prayer. Uh, and then also on Friday night, uh, for the third time in a row, Pastor Paul Brady asked me to lead the prayer coach in Tulsa, and so I was leading that as well uh, uh, in that evening. And, and here's the wonderful thing. We had a whole bunch of people from around the globe agreeing with us and praying for Australia, because that's what he asked me to do, is lead a prayer time for Australia and teach people how to pray for Australia and the scriptures and so forth and so on. And a prophecy that I'm going to read out to you in a minute. And so we have people from all over the place praying and believing God with us. Isn't that wonderful? But here's the thing. I realized it was good for me to get some sleep. Uh, but I also, I also realized that entering into rest is a good thing, but entering into a state of slumber is not. Now, we need to be able to enter into a place of rest and our place of sleep, a place of rest, but not in our sleep, a place of slumber. Because it would be real easy for some people to now just sigh, breathe a sigh of relief and just like, okay, well, we can relax now. You know, We've got a Christian prime minister. No, that is not the time to relax. That is the time to enter into rest, the rest of faith, but it is not the time to enter into a slumber. And so we need to understand this. Romans 13, 11 tells us, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. This is the time to awake out of sleep, not to go to sleep. For, our, for, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, now, now think about that. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. So when the day dawns, it's time to wake up. This has been some dark things going on. And we got a dawning of a, of a new day, a new moment in the history of this nation. I heard uh, one commentator last week say that this was the most important election in this nation since the Second World War. The one that could, could potentially shape or reshape this nation more than any other because of the, the manifestos that have been presented and the things that have been done in, in the lead up to this election. I mean, I don't know about the devil shooting himself in the foot. He just can't seem to help himself. I mean, the timing of the Israel Falau sacking. My goodness. It was a bit of a wake-up call for the average Australian to think, well, if somebody can get sacked for a post, just quoting Scripture, then, you know, what hope have any of us got if, 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 a, if an overarching government and... and, and Union workplace agenda is going to have that much of a reach into your life that you're, you're not safe by even opening your mouth anymore? Well, I think it woke a few people up. The devil shot himself in the foot once again. Well, we've been praying this stuff. It's not taking glory for us as prayers. We, it's taking glory for the Holy Spirit who's led us into a place of prayer to declare some things exactly as they've gone down. We've seen them in the Spirit. We've prayed them. 
We've prophesied them. We've, we've got into agreement with other believers in the place of the Spirit and prayed these things. It's now time. Uh, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry or drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. That's what we've got to now declare over this nation. Uh, Romans 13 in the, in the Passion says, Time is, uh, To live like this is all the more urgent, for time is running out, and you know, that, you know it is a strategic hour in human history. Well, that sounds like right now to me. It is time for us to wake up. Huh. What's the, verse 14 in the Passion, I think, really encapsulates it. It says this, Instead, fully immerse yourselves into the Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. And don't waste even a moment's thought on your former identity to awaken its selfish desires. Praise God. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 15 says, Awake to righteousness and don't, don't sin. Ephesians 5 it says, uh, verse 13, But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. And what, what's our response to that? How do, we, how do we do that? How do we, how do we walk in this light? How do we walk in this state of being awake? There is a response. There is a, there is a manifestation that's supposed to come through me. How do we do it? Speaking to one another. How? In Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And I want to say this to you again. This would still have been our instruction today had the election gone in another direction. In fact, it might have been even more necessary for us to have a smile on our face today had that been the case. Again, not talking about politics here. I'm talking about agendas. Agendas. You know one of the first things that would have been undone this week by Bill Shorten's own admission is he would have, he would have unrecognized Jerusalem. He would have pulled back the recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of, of Israel. That would have been one of the first things he would have done this week. Praise God. Pray for Bill Shorten. Pray for him. I mean, he's obviously stepped down as leader of the opposition. Thank God. Um, I mean, it was necessary in that sense. But pray for the man. Pray for him. He's, big. he's actually really big on my heart this morning. Can we just take a moment to pray for Bill Shorten? Father, we just pray for that man. And I don't know all of the conflict that's going on in his heart and his mind and and all sorts of things that, that will be uh, happening in his own emotions and, and thought life right now, but I lift him up before you in the name of Jesus. And I, pr I just pray that there would be a, a, a moment of pause, a moment of, of sanity, a moment of clarity, and whatever blinders or blinkers that have been around his mind or his sight, Lord, would be removed, and that, that there would be a moment of reaching out to you. Uh, he declares he's a church-going man. I don't know what that means to him, but Father, I just pray that whatever scriptures he's heard, whatever things that he's experienced, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that he would turn his face to your face, that he would know, know you as Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. And I do pray a comfort over him. Losing in that, losing in that way can't have been easy, and having to step down from a place of leadership and I do pray there would be a comfort in Jesus' name. Praise God. Um, and so there's this, there's this wake, arise, you sleeper. Don't go to sleep. Wake up. Take full advantage of everything that God's put in our, in our hearts and our lives right now. And we've got to understand this. And last week, of course, I was praying, pray, uh, teaching and preaching and uh, we put it out on ministry mail that the breaking of waters and that prophetic 
moment where those waters are ruptured, those mem that membrane, so to speak, that's been holding back is ruptured, that the waters break forth and birth into a new thing. And it, it's amazing to me. We were praying this out. We were entering into this very point of travail last week and talking about this breaking forth and this breaking of waters and this birthing of this new thing in, in this nation and what God wants in this nation. And I'm after, after, after all of that, I started to hear, and, and I'm going to draw your attention to a prophecy, which includes that it's becomes very, it became very obvious to me that there actually anybody that was tuned into the Spirit last week was praying the same thing, declaring the same thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. It, 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 is, a, it, is, a mighty, it is a mighty thing, a powerful thing that we need to understand. One of the, one of the scriptures uh, that I had on my heart last week as I was, and I was praying it out. And I want you to listen to this in the context of what, what we've just seen happen. This is how the Lord directed me to pray. He gave me Psalm 61. Psalm 61. I want you to turn there with me just quickly. Psalm 61. And this is what we were praying. This is what we were praying in noontime prayer. This is what I've been praying. This is what I've been declaring. Now, we know that when this is King David, and he's very much talking about himself within that context of Israel, but you know the, you know the scriptures are God-breathed, right? You know that they're, they're, they're timeless. You know God can take lift pages out of a, a scripture out of, page, out of the pages, and he can bring it into the now moment. He can turn it into a rhema for us in this moment. Amen. So God did that with Psalm 61 for me last week. And I don't know that David was a very, very... A greatly traveled king. I don't, think, I don't think he was on ships going around the world. There's nothing in the Bible to tell us that. He's pretty much spent his entire time in, the, in, in, that, in that area of Israel. And so, and so it's an interesting statement that David says. He says, hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. Aren't you glad that God attends to our prayer? Aren't you glad that he's attentive to do what, what he, he has commissioned us to pray? Now listen to this. From the end of the earth... I will cry to you. Well, why would David say that? Did he have, did, was he planning on, on jumping on a 747 and, and doing a praise, a praise walk around Australia? I, I don't think so. I think by the Spirit of God, David penned this for such a time as this. For us to be able to put this in our mouths, because David never came here, the ends of the earth. This is literally the ends of the earth from Jerusalem. You know, the, and he penned, he, he, I mean, he, not, not just once, a number of times, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Well, guess where the sun comes up first? Down in this part of the world, in the southern hemisphere here. And so he says, he says, from the ends of the earth I will cry to you. Well, we can put that right in our mouth. What, what can we cry? We, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I'm telling you, there was a, a sense in people's prayer in the last few weeks with, with, with what's happened with Izzy Falau and, and, and schools and the safe school stuff and, all, and gender theory and, and birth certificates in Tasmania and all of this and abortion and all this sort of stuff. There was this, you can almost feel this sense of people just kind of like their heart fainting. And this, the Lord had led me to pray this. When my heart is overwhelmed, when the heart of this nation is overwhelmed, what do we need to do? Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We got a great big red rock in the middle of our nation, but there is a rock, the real, true, center, heartbeat rock of our nation is called Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we were praying from the reef to the rock, from the beach to the bush, huh. from the north to the south, the east and to the west. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, he goes on to say, uh, For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. And I'm praying this over this nation. Pray this over Australia. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. And when I got to that point, the Lord arrested me and said, that's the constitution of this nation. When this nation made a constitution, it made a vow. It put forth a, a legal declaration concerning the stance and the stand of, of what this nation was. It was a vow. And so, and so David says this, and we can take this for this nation... 
uh, he says, For you, O God, have heard my vows. You've heard the vow of this nation, the constitutional declarations that were primarily formulated around the Word of God and those principles. You will prolong... Now, here's, here's why I got... Hang on, back up. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Praise God. There's a heritage for this nation. Where does it come from? It comes from and it comes to those who have a reverential awe for God, those who fear the name of God. Praise the Lord. Now, here's where I got excited because as I saw this, I, I started to pray for Scott Morrison. He says, you will prolong the king's life. Huh. Well, that, 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 David was praying that for himself in, in this particular moment. But as I started to pray this, I just felt like I, I, I'm praying this out for a prolonging of the prime ministership for, for Scott Morrison, for our nation. And so I started to pray that. Lord, you will prolong it. Prolong the king's life. You will prolong the king's life, his years and many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. Lord, we pray that mercy and truth would be the preservation of our prime minister. That that would mark his, his prime ministership. Mercy and truth in Jesus' name. So I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Hallelujah. I, I, want, you to, I want you to mark that psalm in your Bibles because this is, this is something we need to pray over this nation this year. Those words, I got in there and I hooked into that psalm and I really felt like it was a now word for this nation. Hallelujah. And then I came across a prophecy. And oh my, 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 this is going to bless you. I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know this uh, particular lady that prophesied this. I had to do a little bit of research and check with a few people. And, and everywhere I, I heard people said, no, this is legit. She's a, a prophet of God and, and, and uh, has, been, has been good, you know, accurate prophecy and so forth and so on. And, and more, I'm open to that, you know. And so uh, the lady's name is Lana, Lana Vorsen. And I don't know where she's from or, or anything else, but I'll tell you what, what, as I read these words, it resonated with my spirit. It was from the Lord. So I'm going to read it out to you, and I want you to listen to it, and I want you to hear it, because, because I heard this. I didn't hear this until I think it was Friday. After all the prayer that we'd been doing, after all the prayer we'd put in, everything else, this was, this was drawn to my attention. And I realized as I read this how on task we were with the prayers and with the proclamations and with the praise that we've been doing. And with the shout and with the sound and everything else the Lord had been drawing our attention to. And it starts out this week. This week I heard the words, Australia, you are on red alert. Have you ever heard a red alert? I, I, you know, I pray you never have to in the natural. It's a, it's a freaky kind of a sound when you hear red alert going off or, or, or air raid sirens. If you've ever been in, this, in, in shot of, a, of an air raid siren, it is a freaky kind of a sound. It's spine chilling. And just be in prayer for the people uh, you know, that hear that kind of stuff still. That went off thousands of times down there in southern Israel a few weeks ago. She said, I heard a red, red alert, Australia on red alert. And she Googled it, and the Google says that it's the final stage of alert when an enemy attack appears imminent broadly, a state of alert brought on by impending danger. She says, I heard the Lord say, My people in Australia, the nation is on red alert. I am decreeing a state of emergency from the heavenlies. The enemy is coming to steal the baby. Well, what were we preaching about last week? About the breaking forth of waters and the birthing. It says, The enemy is, trying to, is coming to steal the baby. The enemy is coming to steal the birthing. The enemy is coming to steal the hundredfold blessing. Now, can you see where we went for, for our offering time? I am sounding the trumpet. I am sounding the alarm. The enemy seeks to come to steal, to kill, to destroy, and to terrify, but I'm sounding the trumpet. I'm sounding the trumpet. I'm decreeing the sound of travail. Now, 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 now is the time to travail. What is travail? Travail is that, is that moment, that pressure, that sound, that, 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 uh, that bringing forth that uncomfortable period of time of, of childbirth. And it's, it's, a, it's a sound and it's a, a pressure and it's a moment and it's an intensity in the spirit that God is calling for. 
Now is the time to invite my spirit of travail to come and, and to travail through you to lift the veil of deception. Boy, we were praying into that all last week. Over my nation, over the nation. Many have been afraid to travail. Many have been under, the, under a heaviness. Many have been under a slumber, but I'm sounding the alarm. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray like you've never prayed before. Uh, Lyle Shelton from the Australian Christian Lobby said he has noticed that there is a bit, uh, prayer has happened like, like he's never seen it before in this nation, a coming together in a place of prayer. He says, uh, It is time to partner with me to see my mighty hand come down and break stubborn resistance in the nation. There is a spirit of death that is operating in the nation to steal the birthing I'm going to, I am going to release. I'm calling forth the intercessors to arise, 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 arise in this final hour and shut down the plans of the enemy. It's exactly words we've been using to pray and speak. The intimidation that has come against many of the intercessors in the nation over the last few months, and especially this week, is an attack. Trust in my protection. Trust in my hand over your life. The threats of death are smoke screens to stop you from praying, stop you from speaking, to muzzle you. For the enemy is coming to steal the hundredfold blessing, but I am decreeing a victory cry as my people partner with me to see my hand move. The enemy is coming to steal, but I am coming to shake. I'm coming to shake the nation and all that can be shaken. There must be a shaking for the revealing to take place of my glory. You understand there's, there's, as, mu there's as much a dismantling as there is an establishing that needs to happen. There must be a shaking of the foundations not established in me to bring forth the foundations of righteousness that I desire to establish in the nation. Austra I heard, and I heard the words, Australia in the fire. You shall come forth as pure gold. Did you, hear, did you see what was along the bottom of that thing that they picked up on, on Scott Morrison saying, he says, I will burn for this nation. He said those words. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a holy fire. I don't think he was just speaking naturally. I think he was speaking as a, as a prime minister prophetically. There will be a holy fire on this nation. In fact, we prayed that. You prayed that earlier. We spoke that out earlier over this nation, this holy fire. He goes on and, and says, as I leaned into the Lord, she says, I, as I leaned into the Lord regarding this word, I heard these words, my people in Australia, do not be afraid of the fire. Do not be afraid of the fire, for the fire comes to purify. The fire comes to establish and re-establish. The fire comes to refine. The fire is coming hotter than it has been. But Australia, I am decreeing that you shall come forth as pure gold. You shall come forth refined in the fire. You shall come forth purified in the fire. You shall come forth fortified in the fire. And the words surrounded me. My strong arm will be found in the fire. My strong arm will be found in the fire to come down and, and to save, to deliver and to bring down stubborn resistance. My word shall come forth like a hammer. Jeremiah 23, 29. We prayed these exact scriptures last week. My word is like a fire, like a hammer that smashes a rock. These, these are, it's just so interesting to me that, that this doesn't deviate from anything that we were working with last week and, and before to smash down the stubborn resistance. I call you forth prophets. Come out from under intimidation. Come out from your hiding and speak. Come out from your hiding and decree. Do you understand the Izzy Falau deal? This was not just about trying to muzzle a sports personality. This was a shot across the bow from the enemy to try to muzzle anybody that would speak the word of God. Come out from your hiding and decree. There has been a battle over many of you to keep silent, but I am summoning you and calling you forth. Come out and step forth and decree that the hundredfold blessing of my hand will not be stolen from the nation. The inheritance of the nation of Australia that I have decreed will not be stolen. Decree over the nation that delay will not be found in the nation. Prophets and intercessors, arise. Arise and call the nation into her inheritance. Call her forth. Continue to stamp on the, on the hard ground. Continue to strike 
the ground until you see the hard ground burst forth and the well spring forth. Decree, spring up, O well. Remember the story in the Old Testament, he, they took the, uh, the arrows and, and the prophet told him to strike and he only struck three times and he said, you're going to have a limited victory. You should have just kept striking. And so in the spirit, we just keep striking. In the name of Jesus, we keep striking that ground and striking that ground and we'll just keep going as the spirit leads us. The enemy working and planning to come and steal the birthright of Australia. And it's time to war. In these mighty hour, mightiest hours, it's time to wage war against the enemy. For the enemy seeks to come with a final blow, and I'm decreeing red alert. Prophets, stand up and speak. Do not change what I'm speaking. Do not be afraid to speak what I'm speaking. Do not water down the words I'm giving. Speak the words of truth. Speak the words of life. Speak the words of alignment with love and boldness. I am raising up prophets in the nation of Australia with swords in their mouths. The sword of the word that will bring forth such an alignment, such a purification, such a strengthening to the body of Christ in Australia. Prophets in Australia, be, beware to not be ear ticklers. But stand forth and speak with purity and integrity that which I'm speaking. Allow repentance to rise within you and then receive an even greater revelation of my heart for what I'm releasing into the nation of Australia. For I'm not speaking words of death into the nation. I'm speaking words of life. But do not be afraid of releasing words that correct or words that exhort for the correction is not is for the correction that I am bringing into the body of Christ in Australia is being brought with love it is being brought with truth and it is being brought with encouragement to prepare my people listen for the greatest move of the spirit of God upon this nation stay true prophets of God to that which I'm speaking speak life I'm calling you forth, my people. Stand up, stand up for righteousness. Stand up and call forth the tidal wave of my righteousness and my presence to flood the nation. For the enemy is setting up dam walls to stop the flow of my spirit and the flooding of my righteousness. Didn't we pray last week? And didn't we preach last week about that dam being busted? I remember, as we were praying in the mornings, Alan uh, brought that whole concept of the dam busters. It's time to take back the land, my people, for the scales have been weighed and the body of Christ in Australia has been found wanting. It's time to repent. It's time to step up out of complacency. It's time to step up, step out of mixture. That word, gee, that reached out and grabbed me when I heard that. Mixture. A mixture. Gold is pure. Alloy is a mixture. The brass is a mixture of metals. It looks like the real thing, but it's not. God's wanting the ref refining to take place so that it's not a mixture. It's a, it's a pureness. It's time to repent, to humble yourselves, and cry out for the healing of the land like never before. Second Chronicles 7.14. Of course, we've been praying that one. The heartbeat within the nation of Australia is crying out for revival. I believe that with all of my heart. The heartbeat of the nation must be revived and I'm looking for a people who are standing now without mixture or agenda and crying out for the move of my spirit on my terms, in my way and in my timing. Leaders, I'm holding many of you accountable. Speak my words without hesitation. Speak the words that are flowing from my heart and from my word without mixture and without watering them down. Speak forth righteousness, speak forth the truth of my word, speak forth the truth of my heart, and do not allow fear of man to silence you and water down the messages that I'm wanting you to release. Repent of idle speech. Repent of words of death over the nation. Repent for words of accusation and words of flattery. It's time to allow the coal from my throne to fall upon your lips and bring purification. For my desire is for you to partner with me to usher in the greatest move of my spirit that has ever been seen in the great south land of the Holy Spirit. My desire is for you to flow with, with me in my agenda, my time and my way to see my glory lifted up. There must be a turning. There must be a repentance. I am a good God. I am a good Father. And I correct out of my love and to bring forth life, increase and a demonstration of my power and glory. Do not abandon wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her, she will keep you safe. Proverbs 4, 6. 
As I continued to sit with the Lord, I heard these words. Now, you've you got to let, see, see, all of this, all of this calls, all of this prayer, all of this place, all of this working, all of this warfare calls for us also a, a, a response in a place of worship. Now, listen to this. Listen to it. We've got to respond to this now. She said, this is what comes forth in her spirit. Worship, worship, worship. It is time to worship loudly. I'm telling you, do you remember what the Lord's been saying to us about the sound? Do you recall us praying about this and, and talking about this? There's a sound to come out. Last week we talked about a sound, a sound that we haven't heard before. Listen, listen to what the Spirit of the Lord says through this lady. Worship, worship, worship. It's time to worship loudly. Worship, now listen to this, get this, this is so good. Worship above the noise. Amen. Worship above the confusion. Worship above the confusion. She repeats that twice. For worship will fling open the gates of the nation to usher me in as the King of glory. Amen. And then surprise, surprise, we have Psalm 24, verses 7 through 10 from the Passion Translation, which we've been, we've been, we've been speaking this out. And here it is right here in this prophetic word. So wake up, you living gateways. Lift up your heads, you ageless doors of destiny. Welcome the King of glory, for he is about to come through you. You ask, who is this King, this glory King? The Lord, armed and ready for battle, the mighty one, invincible in every way. So wake up, you living gateways, and rejoice. Fling wide, you ageless doors of destiny. Here he comes. The King of glory is ready to come in. That's what we've got to do. Uh, don't you love that? I'm going to say that again. Worship above the noise. Oh, that just, oh my goodness, that's going off on the inside of me. Worship above the confusion. Oh, that is so good. So good. What I'm going to do in the nation of Australia will bring the nation to a standstill. It will bring a holy awe a wonder, the reverence of who I am in the nation. I am going, I am coming in a way that's unexpected. It's talking about the revival dynamic that will take place in this nation. I am coming in a way that will surprise and to some it will offend. Hallelujah. We've not been this way before. But I'm coming in power. I'm coming to position Australia as the key to unlock many other nations. I will release a new sound out of Australia. Amen. Glory to God. To the nations of the world. The sound of my heart. That's what that sound's going to be representing. It's the heart beat of God. Well, the, the, the only other person I know thus far that's heard that is John. When his head was on the chest of Jesus, as the blood, he heard the blood pumping that was about to be shed for the nation. His head was on his chest at the Last Supper. He heard God's heart beat. He heard it in the blood, but we're going to hear it in a sound. It's going to come out of this nation to the nations of the world, the sound of my heart and the sound of revival. And right now, the enemy is attempting to muzzle the sound. The enemy is attempting to hinder that sound. But as my people rise up and worship me above all else, there will be a mighty move of my spirit that will break down all the walls the enemy is building to keep me out. There will be a sound released in and through the nation of Australia that resounds loudly, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Hallelujah. Let me read that to you again. There will be a sound released in and through the nation of Australia that resounds loudly, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Let me tell you something. There was, a, there was every single demonic strategy that could possibly be unleashed, unleashed was unleashed last week to try to stop God's purpose for this nation. 
who could stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Nothing. My people, no matter what you see in the natural, now, 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 now take note of this, because... Because what we saw in, in last night in an election, still make sure that you're not focused on the natural dynamic of what took place. We can't. We can't do that. Regardless of, of the victory, regardless of what was won or lost, we cannot look at that and put our natural eyes and take our natural focus on that alone. Do not. Uh, no matter what you see in the natural, no matter what you see with your physical eyes, stand, strike and strike again. Stand, strike and strike again. The church of Australia will be brought to her knees again in awe and wonder of who I am, of my power, my glory and my beauty. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. That word resonates with me. Does it resonate with you? What's been, re what's been released out of that? It is a, a powerful word, I believe. And we've been in this 21 days of prayer and fasting. I know today's a little different. But I just felt like it was important for us to hear those words and come into a place of agreement because in that we heard a conf confirmation of all the things, that, the scriptures, the prayers, the things we've been working in, in, with heaven with. Coming into that place of divine alignment. And so here's what we're going to do just now. It's now it's, I know it's 12 o'clock already, but we're going to pray. We're going to come into a time of prayer. We, I don't think we need to spend long doing this right now. But, but you know, we're going to strike and strike again. We're, before we wrap up this service, we're going to, in the, in the spirit, we're going to take a hold of those, those arrows, so to speak, and we're going to strike the ground. We're going to stamp on the ground. We're going to, we're going to declare who can stop the Lord Almighty. We're going, to, we're going to come into this place and pray. So if you wouldn't mind just standing with me, taking a stance... Nobody, f yeah, prosna kiri bande, prosna kiri bande. Ah, kamana mashiki abrondo roma sikire bande. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on, let's just lift our voices now and let's pray. O braba baba shikire bande, rosa kiri bande, branda. I want you actually to take your eyes off the natural dynamic of what took place yesterday. I want you to put your eyes on the spiritual dynamic. Rosa Kiribanda, Roconama Sikiribanda, Rikiribiba Soko Branda, Rikia Brate, O Brababa Shiki Ebrosondo Rosna Kiribanda, in the mighty name of Jesus. O Poba Shiki Ebrababa Shiki Reboroboro Borobosoto, Ebrastande Brekinimash de Kia Brande, Ekia Barabo Soko Brondo Robo Sikiri. Come on, let's press now. Let's strike and strike again. Let's stamp on the fallow ground. Oh, Lord God, we cry out, Lord God. Oh, Pramamamandiriba Soko Broson for the heartbeat of your Brosoki Abana, the beat of your heart, the heartbeat of revival to come up as that sound. For that sound to come up, Lord God. For that sound to be heard across this land. For that sound to resound. Oh, prema mashtiki e brotono no masiki re 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 basande. Ye piamo no mondo rosto ko broto to to riba baba shiki re bonde. Oh, Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we pray. We declare. We decree your love over this land. Oh, over the nations. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Above all else, we worship you. Above all else, we worship you. Above all else, we worship you, God. We worship above the noise. We worship above the confusion, Lord God. Oh, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor, Lord God. We magnify your holy name with a reverential awe in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord we God, we prepare ourselves. Uh, Father, we prepare ourselves for what's ahead. 
Father, we prepare ourselves in, a, in the Spirit for what's about to flow, what's about to come forth, and what's about to resound. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not a new strategy, and we just have to look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And what keeps constantly coming up into my spirit is that there was so much pressure to bow down mm. to the strategies of the enemy. Mm. And no matter what the consequences were, they knew exactly what they were in for mm. and standing up for what, what God had placed in their hearts and for not um, bowing down and for not compromising mm. in mm. any form. That's right. And because of that, um, you know, they came under fire, literally, there was fire, they were placed into a dungeon of fire, and um, it was so hot and fiery that I think even the guards mm. um, died, mm. <laughs> they weren't even in the fire, but God had his hand on them, and um, he brought an angel in, um, and, right. and just, I mean, like, how can after all of that, after all that pressure, and after that, how can that country not come into a place of revival after seeing that testimony of God's power and His might? Thank how can they not come into a place Hallelujah. of revival? Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, my God. We thank you for, yes, yes, to some it's going to surprise and to others it will offend. But it will be a, a release of power, the power of our God. Oh, Father God, we say, we declare out loud, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, kia branda, kia branda, no weapon formed. Restende rikishna karabanda brosa kiribanda ronda rosta kiribanda. Oh, pramama mama shikie broto totona masikirirish te kie brasto. Oh, pamama mama sinder inder 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 ya bro 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 kuna mana masikiribare. Oh, God, well, what we just say and we recognize. And Lord, as a church, we, we commit. This is not the time, this is not our time to slumber. This is not our time to draw back. This is not our time to stop striking in the spirit. But Father, we commit to step up. Father, we commit to get in. Cobro sondo to to launch, to charge. Kiabroso to take the ground and the spirit in the name of Jesus. Ho pramas to fan the flame, to fuel the fire. Oh, we fuel the fire. We fuel the fire of God. See, see the fire consumed sin. But it wouldn't harm, it won't harm those who are sanctified and set apart for God. Oh, in fact, it refined the scenario. It declared the goodness and the glory of God. Oh, if our prime minister is gonna burn for this nation, let him burn by the by the awesome fire of God. And let him be refined as a man of God. And let us burn with him in the, in the name of Jesus in that place of prayer. Let our hearts burn within us. Fall, Manamasikia, let us be surrounded by a holy fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, the sound, the sound, the sound. Oh, shtekia brondo romasikiri panda rakana masukura bonde. Yeah, that's right. Gonna lift my poems in victory. Gonna make his praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. Death couldn't hold him down. Gonna lift our hands in victory. Gonna make his praises loud. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!
Thank you, my God. Oh, your praise resounding loudly across this nation this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, my God. Oh, thank you, Lord. saints and angels bow before your you my God we give you all the glory we give you all the honor and all the praise oh ramandande de ribasso coriandare masse che le lende oh pamamande dendembre andare le chi le ama sala le chi le dista carabasso e chi abare bossondare il chiri di bandai 
Oh, we resound, Lord God, with your praises and your glory. Words of exaltation for our King and our God. He's awesome and mighty. He's majestic and wonderful. He's our daddy. He's our father. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is love almighty. He is love almighty. And we thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you this year. Let our praises get louder. Let our worship come up to, to a place where we've, we've never experienced before. Let the, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts come out and resound in a sound that, that obliterates everything that is, would try to stand against the purpose and plan of the Lord God Almighty for this nation. As we work with and follow and charge with Jesus, the Lord of hosts, let the angels that have been assigned to this great South land, let us be aware, let us not constrain or restrict or in any way limit their functionality. But let your word come out of our mouths. Let them be accurate. Let them do, be divinely inspired. Not flesh and blood, but from the Father. Now more than ever before. The words of our mouths and the angelic assistance and activation, so important. Don't underestimate. Let no corrupt words come out of your mouth, proceed out of your mouth. But what's good for edification, for the things that will build up, for the things that will release the will of heaven over this nation. Any words of doubt or fear, or unbelief that have been there, repent from those, turn away from them, and let the Spirit of God fill your mouth with good things. And let the youth of this nation be renewed like the eagles in this day. Let there be that fresh birthing forth from that place of travail where the waters break in this newness, this, this sound like a sound of rushing mighty waters and a mighty rushing wind be heard across this land like never before. The great south land of the Holy Spirit, the greatest revival this part of the world has ever known and seen that spread and join with other revivals and other floods taking place in other parts of the world. So that a breath before we see Jesus in the clouds, we will know that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as those waters cover the sea. Father, we're so grateful to you and we, th we thank you and we praise you and we magnify your holy name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. May you know his peace this week. His shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. May you know his hundredfold return break forth in your life. And may that sound rise up on the inside of you big and loud and strong as you decree as you prophesy in Jesus name this week everybody said amen amen amen, amen. praise God what a wonderful time uh, I'll see you in a, in a few weeks unless you get online and then I'll see you in Jerusalem love you guys bless you <laughs>